Hello, this is Mr. Voss. Today you're going to be watching an iMovie over Mrs. Holcomb's class presentations of Black History Month. Each student in this classroom chose a famous African-American person that stood out in African-American time. They have put a lot of hard work into these presentations. They have done an awesome job. We hope that you enjoy these presentations and it will be very meaningful to all of you. Thank you for watching. Hey, good job. young children with a project heart. I believe that I might not be there yet, 
also sing. I also play the violin and the cornet. But the most important instrument that I played was the piano. I, I grew up with piano. I, I, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a musician. And I lived my dream of being a musician. So the very first song that I ever created was the Mr. Leaf Rag. Here, why don't I play it for you? I'm Kathleen Rock. I was born August 26th, 1918, and died February 24th, 2020. I am mostly known for being a Central American. I was a mathematician at NASA. My calculations of orbital mechanics were crucial to the success of the first and subsequent U.S. send one of the first person John Gunn into orbit. I was one of the first black students integrated into West Virginia school, West Virginia State's graduate schools. I'm Dulcia Gibson. I was born on August 25th, 1927 in Clarendon County, South Carolina. I died at the age of 76 on September 28th, 2003 in East Orange General Hospital, Missouri. Later in my life, I suffered a stroke and later died because of heart and respiratory problems. I only had one sibling named Mildred Gibson. My parents were Annabelle and Daniel Gibson. I, mar I was married twice and divorced twice, and I did not have any children. After, gradu after graduating from Florida a and I took a job teaching physical education at Anthony University in Jefferson City, Missouri. At a young age, me and my family moved to Harlem a neighborhood in New York City. I was on public assistance at the time, and I struggled in school but loved table tennis. I was discovered by musician Buddy Walker, who invited me to play tennis at the local club. I was the first African-American tennis player to win the French, the Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open titles as a senior player. I was also the first African-American tennis player to compete at the U.S. National Championships in 1940. In 1960, the United States 
few items to prepare for Jenny's makeover. I went to the barber shop to do my makeup. I'm going to choose work from Cinema One on a future project that features preparation of my makeup in international cinematic stations. I got additional training in technical skills that helped me get a skill I need. After that, I was the first African American person in life to get a car license. Three years and 14 years, I survived my first major airplane accident in February 1970. My plane's engine stopped smoking in my clutch. I suffered from a broken leg, cracked ribs, and cuts in my back. This did not stop me from flying. I performed an air show from Hamilton with Dave Dustin as trainer. I performed, I was going to do a work for him from Tokyo Airport. On April 30th, 1976, I learned that I could be in very well. He was flying 37 feet in the air when a loose wind got caught in the engine. I fell out of the air from him that he was not wearing a seatbelt on me. Hi, my name is George Washington Carver. In 1864, I was born. Sometimes you don't believe. In 1864, I was two. After I was taken to Arkansas to be sold, my owner, Moses Carver, found and adopted me. Susan Carver. In, late in my late 20s, I got a high school degree. In, in 1894, I graduated from Iowa State Agricultural College, now Iowa State. In 1896, I went to leave for Tuskegee to teach the new agricultural department. For a time, my focus was Southern agriculture. In 1906, I invented the Jessup Wagon to teach farmers how to plant products such as peanuts and sweet potatoes. Sadly, that wasn't a very successful market. So I shortly after I invented 418 products from these plants. In 1943, I died falling down. I am Michelle Obama, but I was originally Michelle Robinson. I was born on January 17, 1964. I am 57 years old. As a child, my family didn't have much to live for. My brother Craig and I were always together. As I grew, my life became easier. I got a job at Hickory Austin at Grand City Papa. I later met Barack Obama at one of my future jobs and decided to marry him. I became the first lady of the United States of America when Barack became president. I am now living the rest of my life with Barack and he is no longer president to this day. My child took was a little tough at first. I lived in Chicago, Illinois with my family. I was the youngest and I had an older brother named Craig Robinson. My parents are Marion Robinson and Peter Robinson. My brother and I had to share a room, and the only part he was a curtain split right down the middle. We both learned to read and write at, that, at about the age of four, and we were so smart we were, we were able to skip second grade. We got older and we had a very good education in our lives. I went to a different school by six, sixth grade, and in high school I went to Whitney and Young Magnet High School. We were the first gifted children to the Chicago High School. Here I learned how to serve as a student governor treasurer. In college, I decided to follow in Craig's footsteps and attend the same college year, which is Princeton University. And I graduated in 1985. After college, I ended up going to Harvard Law School and was awarded my JD in 1988. In my life with Barack Obama, I knew it was full of twists and turns around every corner. We were married to each other at Trinity Church on October 3rd, 1992. We had met in 1989 at my first job, where Barack was a summer intern who I was assigned to. At first, I didn't know if I wanted to marry him or not since it could have affected our job relationship. In my marriage, I was unsure if I should marry Barack Obama or not. I decided that I would start at Jason Johnson first. It could affect my work relationship if I were to marry him and get in trouble. I realized things after two years of dating we shared with each other. It was amazing to be with him and I am glad we married each other because look at who I am now. I am the first lady and husband to the 44th president of the United States. After college, I knew I was a confident, smart, and independent woman who could do anything she set her mind to. I was interested in law and government stuff, so I got a little bit more into that. My parents were helping me as best as they could and I was so happy to have him in my life along this road. They had me come and coach the men's basketball and was doing really well. Now in my life, I know I have both sides. I know I am the 44th president's wife, and I know I am the first lady of the USA. 
college became autobiography of myself in 2018 titled Becoming. It was a I was born September 4th, 1981 in Houston, Texas. I got married to Jay-Z on April 4th, 2008. I have three children named Blue Ivy, Rami, and Sir. I, I won my first solo Grammy in, in 2000. Since then, I have won 21 Grammys. I started to become famous for my singing in the late 1900s. In, in 1990, I joined a group called Destiny Child. This group is what made me, is what gave me the fame that I built my career off of. The first, the first award I won with that group was in 1997. In 2005, Destiny Child broke up. It was good for me because I really wanted to focus on my solo career. Since then, I have starred in 24 movies and I have released 80 singles in my, in my career. My top, my top two selling singles are Crazy in Love and Baby Boy. T to this day, I'm, 30 I'm 39 and still releasing sing songs. Hello, my name is Zora Nail Hurst. I was a famous author in 1937. I was born January 7th, 1890. I was also the fifth child out of my eight siblings. At age seven, my mother, Lucy Ann, died not long after my father, John, remarried Monty Moe. But at age 19, I learned I was adopted from Columbia. After moving a couple houses down on the street of Eatonville, where I grew up, I realized how much of the world I was missing. So I decided to go to three different colleges, where I learned to professionally write books. In 1936, I decided to write a book titled Their Eyes Are Watching God, which was published in, in 1937. The, the book involves a girl named Janie Starks, who lives in Eatonville. At age 46, I was already famous, but only 14 years later, years after I died at a senior center in Florida because of a stroke. My grave remained unnamed until 1973 due to my family's loss of money. Hello, my name is Sojourner Chu. I was born in Castillo, University of New York, 1719. My original name was Isabella Gunter, but I later on changed it due to one of my students. I eventually grew up to be an African-American women's activist. I was the first black woman to win such a push against the white man. In my teens, I was united with another player with whom I had five children with, beginning in 1850. Eventually, in 1877, I ran away with my uncle, Sophia, to a nearby abolition, abolitionist family, the Van Wagoners. I escaped 1826 on what would be known as my walk to freedom. I became so famous that I ended up moving further from Lincoln. My life was great after slavery until I finally passed away in a very long time with my last words, be a follower of the Lord Jesus. I was born on January 17, 1942. I am Muhammad Ali. I was a professional boxer and social activist. I was the first fighter to win the World Heavyweight Championship on three separate occasions. I, I successfully defended this title 19 times. But I was also known for some of the bad things, like the draft of it, like the draft conv like the draft evading conviction I was charged with. In 1978, I was arrested, put in jail for five years, and had to pay ten thousand dollars to get out of jail. But other good things happened too, like I was put in the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990, and in 2005 I was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I was also one of the only people who was able to get out of the draft evasion because I had a great lawyer. My final one record of 56 wins and five losses with 37 knockouts has been matched by others, but the quality of my opponents was in Zoma Logan's success during his prime placed him among boxing immortals. And you might not know, but on February 18, 1954, I got to meet the Beatles. And on March 31st, 1973, I got my jaw broken because of a fight in an opponent named Norton. Now come F. Uh, I was born in May 19, 19, 
Nebraska. My childhood was pretty tough since we had to move a lot due to racism and my dad died by by getting run over by a streetcar when I was six. Uh, my mom would basically go insane and she would be sent to a mental asylum and then I would, me and my siblings would be sent to foster homes. We would go to school but and I was doing really well until I decided to drop out because of racism and dirt, because of the discrimination I would receive from teachers. I would then live with an older half-sister and commit some pretty small crimes and then get arrested. I would then decide to educate myself after the education I missed out and even decide to memorize a dictionary. I would then go join the Nation of Islam later after I was sent back home. I would then, I would then take speeches in temples and gain, and gain the second rank to the leader of the nation himself. And then I would join the civil rights movement, but as a different voice, as I would urge my followers to defend themselves by any means necessary. I would then get assassinated in February 21st, 1865, when multiple members of the Nation of Islam decided to shoot me with guns. I'm Chyna and Nicole. I was born on August 25th, 1998 in Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up with two older sisters, one little brother, and my mom and dad. I always loved to per perform, and I was lucky to be raised in a musical family. I was singing before I could say full sentences. My first role was in the movie The Gospel when I was five. My big great came when Tyler Perry asked me to be on the TV show House of Pain. It ran for five years. I have roles as extras on a few Disney shows and later in my role as China Parks on Disney's Ant Farm, which stood for Advanced Method of Talent. This allowed me to sing and act. I won an outstanding performance in a children's series award for Ant Farm. I was so excited when I got the role of Uma in The Sentence 2 and 3 playing an evil villain for the first time. I landed the role of a lifetime in 2017 where I got casted as Jennifer Pierce in the show Black Lightning. I was one of the first black female superheroes on TV. I had so many great, I've had so many great opportunities that I worked hard for, and I love that other little girls look up to me. I hope I've shown them that as a, a, success, a successful black female musician and actor, they can be anything they want to be. Hi, I am Martin Luther King Jr., also known as MLK. I'm the minister of Atlanta's largest black church, and and the most well-known spokesperson for, for the civil rights movement. I believed in nonviolence, which was part of what led to me being well-known. I also avoided an assassination attempt, attempt a decade before my death. I, I have a famous quote that says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The time is always right to do what is right. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. When kids study me in school, it's not just the history that they learn about. It's the ideas that apply to everyone involved. I'm also known for my many speeches. My Eye of the Boom speech has become one of my most important speeches. I was assassinated April 4th, 1968. And there are many remembrances of me, like, like streets and monuments. Hi, I'm Rosa Louise McCauley. I was born February 4, 1913 in Tekesi, Alabama. My parents' names were James McCauley and Leona Edwards. James McCauley was a carpenter and Leon Edward, Leona Edwards was a teacher. I moved with my mother, Leona, to, to Pine Level, a town adjusted to Montgomery, Alabama, when, when I was two to live with my grandparents. My brother, Sylvester, was born in 19, 
15 and shortly after my parents separated. My mother was a teacher and the family valued ed education. I moved to Montgomery, Alabama at the age of 11 and went to high school there. A laboratory school in the Alabama State Teachers College of Niagara. I left at 16 early in 11th grade because I needed to care for my dying grandmother. Shortly therefore, her, my chronically ill mother. In 1932, at, at 19, I married Ray, Raymond Parks. Raymond, Raymond was, was 10 years older than me and a member of the National of the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. He encouraged me in my efforts to earn my high school diploma, when I ultimately did in 1933. I worked as a seamstress in the stuffy back room at, at Montgomery Fair Department Store, authorizing white men's suits. I and Raymond became coexisting with white people in the gover in the city city government by Jim Crow. Segregation, specifically water fountains. Black people could only cer only attend certain schools, could drink from specific water fountains, and could borrow books only from the black library along with other restrictions. I joined the Montgomery chapter of NAACP and became chapter se secretary in December 1943. I worked closely with the chapter president, Edgar Daniel Nixon. In, 19, in 1900, Montgomery had passed a city or ordinance to segregate bus passengers by race. Hundreds were empowered to assign seats to achieve that goal. According to the law, no passengers would be required to move or give up their seat and stand in the bus was, if the bus was crowded, and no other seats were available. Other time, over time, and by custom, however, Montgomery bus drivers adopt, adopted the practice of requiring black, black riders to move when there were no only white seats left. After working all day, I boarded the Cleveland Avenue bus, a general monitor's old look bus belonging to the Montgomery line around 6 p.m. Thursday, December 1st, 1955. In downtown Montgomery, I paid my fare and sat in an empty seat in the first row of, of back seats reserved for blacks in the colored section. Near the middle of the bus, my row was directed behind the 10 seats reserved for right pass passengers. Intentionally, I did not notice that the bus driver was the same man, James F. Blake who had left her in the rain in 1943 as the bus traveled along at its regular route. All of the front of the Empire Theater and several white passengers boarded. Blake noted that two or three white passengers were standing as, as the front of the bus had filled to capacity. He moved the colored section behind, sign behind Rosa and demanded the four black people gave up their seats in the middle section so that the white passengers could sit. Blake said, why don't you stand up? Parks responded. I responded, I don't think I should give, I don't think I should have to stand. Blake called the pli police, police to arrest Rose, me, when recalling the incident up for eyes on the prize in 1987 public television series 
on asked if I would stand up, and I said, no, I'm not. And he said, well, if you don't stand up, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. I said, you may do that. People always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. That isn't true. I was not tired physically or no tired than a usual, than a usual, I us usually was at the end of a working day. I was not old, although some people have an image of me of being old. I was 42. No, the only tired I was was tired of giving in. When I refused to give up my seat, a police officer arrested me. As the officer took me away, I recalled that I I recalled that I asked, "Why don't you push us around? Why do you push us around?" I remembered him saying, "I don't know, but the law, but the laws, the law, and you are under arrest." I later said, "I only knew I was being." I only knew that as I was being arrested that it was the very last time I would ever ride on the humanitarian of this time. I was charged with violation of Chapter 6, sec Section 11, Federational Law of the Montgomery City Code. Although technically I had not taken a right only seat, I had been in the colored section. Edgar Nixon, president of the Montgomery chapter of NAACP, the leader of Pullman Porter Union, and, and my friend Cleveland Dirt bailed me out of jail that evening. My acts were defensed, and the Montgomery bus boycott became important symbols of the movement. I became an inter international icon for resistance to racial segregation and or an organization and cover with sort of civil rights leaders including Edgar Nixon and Martin Luther King Jr. I had attended the High Highlander Folk School a Tennessee Center for training activists for workers right Rights the racial equality, although wildly honored in later years, I also suffered for my act. I was fired from my job and received death threats for years afterwards. Shortly, the boycott, I moved to Detroit, where I briefly found similar work. From 1965, to 1918. I served as a sub as a secretary and receipts for John Connors and an African American US representative. I was also active in the Black Power movement and supported of the pol the politician prisoners in in the US. After retirement I wrote a back autobiography and continued to insist that there was no more work to be done in the struggling of just for justice. I received national organization, recognition, including the NAACP's 1979 Supreme Medal, the Pre National Medal of Freedom, the Con Con Congressional Gold Medal, and a Prince statue in the U.S. in the United States Capitol National National Hall. Upon my death in 2005, I was the first woman to buy an honor in the in the capital of Atuna, California, and the community community combinational. Rosa Parks Day on her birth, my birthday, February 4th. While Ohio and Oregon communicate the anniversary of her arrest, December 1st, of my arrest, December 1st.
Here I was sitting right next to Martin Luther King Jr. Here I was as a child right up here. And then here I am getting older and older. And then here is things about the Montgomery um, bus boycott. I died October 24th, 2005.